All right, now that I've recorded my ECG patterns for the four or five different body positions and exercise, I want to go ahead and download that data so we can start to analyze it. So on the website, if you look under the exercise number four, which was EKG, and you go to the bottom there, you'll see a resource folder that has an EKG binder in it. It has five different files in there, and those files from one to five are one that's sitting down, and five would be post-exercise. So you're going to download all of those onto your hard drive, and they have to be a JPEG. They can't be a PDF in order to use the software we're going to use today. So I've already downloaded those. Now I want to go to ImageJ. So ImageJ is the software we use to download that and to analyze it. Um, now you can download it very easily and run it on your PC. For a Mac, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, so if you like uh, and you have a Mac, just try Run ImageJ in the browser. It's a little bit clunkier, but it's easier than downloading the software on there. Now I already have a PC and I have it installed, so I'm just going to search for ImageJ and I'm going to open that up. Okay, and then you can see the bar right there. I want to open my first image, and this would EKG binder page one. Okay, and there you can see the file. I'm going to blow it up just a little bit, and I can um, use my little hand tool to scoot things around and also to, to maximize it. Now you're going to see that 30 seconds of, uh, of an electrocardio uh, graph uh, is kind of messy in there. And so uh, the electrocardiogram has some good peaks and not some good peaks as well. So we want to look for very good, easy to recognize wave patterns. There's a great one right down here. And so I'm going to zoom in on that just using control plus. Now, before I start to measure things, I need to go calibrate my software. And to do that, I want to draw a line between these two big lines right there. Now, the two big lines are five big boxes apart. Each big box is worth 0.2 seconds. So five times 0.2 is one second. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in one more time and just line up the two lines and draw a line in between them. And we're going to go analyze, set scale, and we're going to tell it global, and we're going to tell that the known distance is one, and it says one what? We're going to call it one second. Okay? And we're going to say okay. Now, if that's all set and I measure one big box, I should have it coming out to be somewhere around 0.2. So let's do that. Analyze, measure, hey, 0 0.203. Close enough, good enough for government work. If you want to zoom into a small box, remember they're supposed to be what? That's right, 0 0.04 seconds apart. So go about right there. Analyze, measure, okay, 0 0.038 something, that's fine, okay, close enough. All right, so let's look at uh, this particular waveform. And uh, first we want to find out what are the peaks and waves we're going to measure. So give me just a second. Okay, so on the bottom left, you should be able to see uh, the sample waves, uh, durations, uh, intervals, and segments that we're going to measure. And so the first one we want to start out is measuring the P wave. So we have a really nice P wave right there. So let me uh, get the software to where it's showing up. So let's scoot that over just a little bit. And I'm going to zoom in one more time. So the P wave, remember, represents atrial depolarization. So I look at the definition for P wave. Well, it's the start of P deflection to return to baseline. So somewhere about here to about here. Okay, we analyze, measure, we get 0.091, and we see that the uh, average duration ranges between 0.07 and 0.18. So that's fine. That's our P wave. Now we're going to measure the PR interval. The intervals contain a wave, and so the PR interval is start of P uh, deflection to start of Q deflection. So it contains the P wave, but not the Q wave. So right here, start of P to start of Q, probably right about there. We don't see the downward part of Q, so we're just estimating, analyze, measure, and that comes out to be 0.11 seconds, and it should be somewhere between uh, 0.12 to 0.20, so that might be a little bit on the shy side. Now let's look at the QRS complex. So start of Q deflection to the S return to baseline. So this was Q, R, S, and this is baseline. So I'm going to go from the S to where I think the Q deflection would start. So right about there, analyze, measure, 0.091, and it's usually somewhere between 0.06 and 0.12, so that's fine. Now we're going to measure something called the ST segment. 
So the ST segment is the end of uh, S deflection to the start of the T wave. So segments do not contain the waves. So remember, this was Q, R, S, end of S to beginning of T. Well, the T kind of gradually soaps up. So I say it's going to begin right about there. Analyze, measure, comes out to be 0 0.0155. And we see that the range there is, um, what, uh, less than 0.2. So we're doing good there. And now we're going to measure something called the QT interval. So start of Q to the end of T. So it contains both the Q uh, and the T waves. So read it one more time. Start of Q deflection to end of T wave. All right, so somewhere right about there. And 0 0.0, so 0 0.371 uh, one was our QT interval. And that's well within the range of 0.32 to 0.38. That's fine. And now let's look at our T wave. Remember, T wave represents uh, repolarization of the ventricles. And so we're going to say T wave begins maybe right about there and ends right about there. Okay. And so analyze, measure, 0 0.201. Okay. And the range here is somewhere between 0 0.10 and 0.25. So that's fine as well. Okay, next we're looking at something called the TP segment. So end of T wave to the start of the next P. So remember, it does not contain uh, a wave in there. So end of T to start of next P. Well, this P wave here uh, is kind of, we're not sure about that. So let's take a look. We could go to a different pattern, but if I want to measure off this one. Okay, here's one, and it's not great, but we can say this is the end of T wave to the start of the next P wave maybe right about in there, Let's say analyze, measure. Okay, we get a distance of 0.23 uh, uh, seconds. Uh, and again, that is, can be uh, somewhat variable, I think. And now we're going to go for something called the R to R interval. And this is really important because it helps us determine the heart rate. So we're looking between uh, adjacent QRS complexes. And this is one of the easiest things to measure. And so we can just look in here somewhere and find two QRS complexes. And then we just click on there and draw a line in between the R's. Now, they don't have to be at the same height. Just line them up like that. Zoom in to make sure that we've gotten close. OK, and then we just go Analyze, Measure. OK, and we get a distance of 0.733 seconds. And what this means is the heartbeats are closer together uh, than once a second. So it's going to be more than 60 heartbeats per minute. To figure out the actual heart rate, we just go to our calculator. And then we uh, take uh, 60, 60 uh, seconds in a minute, divided by that number, which is 0.733. And we get our heart rate, which is around 81.8 or 82 beats per minute. And that's about normal for me. What you're going to see, though, is if you look at this entire uh, EKG, uh, you're going to see that there are some cases where the heartbeats are closer together and some cases where they're further apart. And that has to do with breathing, uh, because as you breathe in, heart rate tends to speed up. And as you breathe out, heart rate tends to slow down. OK, so now that you've learned how to measure all the different waves uh, and segments uh, for the normal, just sort of sitting down EKG, you want to go and measure those for the other ones as well. The one where you've been lying down, the one where you sit up abruptly, uh, the one after breath hold, and of course, the one after exercise. And then we're going to make a graph comparing the durations of those different uh, segments and intervals to see if there's a difference between these different uh, body conditions of sitting up, laying down, exercise, etc.